In this video, we're going to set up Expo push notifications for Expo 50, the new Expo 50 that just came out. We're going to be using nativenotify.com. The reason is this is the only push notification service that actually works inside of Expo managed workflow. So you do not have to eject out of Expo to use Native Notify. What we're about to walk through will also work in the old Expo before Expo 50. You can use this in both Expo 50 and earlier or later. The reason is Native Notify in the background in the code uses Expo notifications, the Expo notifications library. So however you would use Expo notifications is how Native Notify works too. Native Notify just makes the setup process a lot easier. Instead of following all of these instruction guides and setup guides, all you have to do for Native Notify is paste one line of code in to your app and you're already set up. From that moment forward, Native Notify, that package will keep track of your push tokens, the push tokens generated whenever your app comes on. And after that, Native Notify has a bunch of different services already pre-built into it. For example, you can send push notifications to all of your users at once right away, or they also have something called Indie push notifications. This allows you to send push notifications to individuals. There's also something called a notification inbox. This is sort of like an email inbox, but it's full of the notifications that you've sent in the past. So all your users will be able to open up this notification inbox and see all of their past notifications. There's also group push notifications, which is how you can send notifications based on topics, like maybe you're a restaurant app and you want to send notifications to people who like buying hamburgers. You could create a hamburger group and send push notifications just to that group of users. There's also follow push notifications which is a quick way to set up a social network. Users can follow each other. And whenever one user posts something, you can send out push notifications to all of those users followers specifically. In addition to that, Native Notify, like I said, uses the Expo notifications library. So any of the functions in this Expo notifications documentation page that you want to use will automatically work with Native Notify. So for example, if you want to schedule notifications, maybe this is like an alarm app or something like that. Say you want to schedule notifications for an individual user. You could use the schedule notifications functions built into Expo notifications. As you can see, it works like this. You would say schedule notifications async. You would say when to schedule them and whether or not it repeats or not. So basically anything you need to do related to push notifications for Expo, whether it's Expo 50 or earlier or later, you can do all of that with Native Notify. All the infrastructure you need to do anything related to push notifications is already built for you using Native Notify. So this literally could save you a thousand hours of time. Instead of spending all of that time building building out the infrastructure for yourself. You can just use Native Notify. All the infrastructure is already built for you. And you can see on the homepage some of the testimonials. People just are loving the product. So if you haven't already, go ahead and set up a nativenotify.com account. It's free to sign up. There's no credit card required. After you've logged in, you can click this Create an App button. Click React Native Expo. That will take you to this page. You can watch this video. It's a lot shorter than this video. It goes directly into how to set up push notifications. Your first step, if you haven't already, is to make sure you have the Expo modules inside of your React Native app. If you do not have Expo in your React Native app, you can click this link right here. Once you go to this page, it'll show you how to install the Expo modules. If you already have Expo set up in your app, you can skip this step. Step one is to copy this, install all of this into your app. So open up your project, open up your terminal, paste that there. Step two is to copy this import. And you can actually copy this anywhere in your app. It doesn't really matter where it is. Normally, users would like to either put it in the app.js file. If you're using the Expo router, you're probably using an index.js file. But like I said, all this does is it generates a push token and it saves that push token to native notify to your account. So it can go anywhere in your app. Whenever you want a push notification token to be generated, just put this function there. Like I said, normally, if you're using the old system, you'll put that in app.js. The new system, put it in index.js. 
I'm using the new system, Expo 50 app router. So in my app folder, I have tabs. I'm using the tabs navigation. And in the tabs, I have index as my home page. And if you open up the layout, I use the tabs.screen. And the first screen I put is the index file. If this were something else, it could be home. TSX instead, and this could switch to home. Just whatever your home screen is, that's where you'll want to go. Import your register in and push token function there, wherever your home page is. The next step is to make sure you're using a hook function. Uh, you're probably using a hook function by this point, but if you're not, uh, if you happen to be using a class component, you still can use uh, native notify. Click this right here and it shows a video on how to use a hook function inside of a class component basically. And if you're using class component, you can still use native notify. This video shows you how, but if you're already using a, a hook function, you can just copy this function here, you'll notice your app ID and app token are already in the uh, function for you. So you can just copy this wherever your home function is, where you just imported register in and push token, put that there and you're already done. This is all you have to do to have push notifications set up. Now, if you say MPX Expo start, I'm going to use my iPhone to open this up. You need to open this up on an actual device or it won't work. After you have opened up your app successfully on an actual device like an iPhone or an Android phone, you should see this message. You can now send a push notification. You successfully registered your native notify push token. That means you can actually send push notifications. I'm going to share my phone so you guys can see what it looks like. In your native notify document screen, there is a place to put a title and a message. I'll show you that in a second, but I'm just going to go ahead and send a push notification first. All right. And my iPhone just received it. You can see it right there at the top of my screen. I'm going to open it up and there it is. And where you can see all that is in your documentation. If you come down here, it tells you the steps to take before getting to Expo Start. I forgot to go through those steps. I'll go through them right now. The first step is make sure you have EAS CLI installed on your computer globally. So you'll need to say npm install dash G EAS CLI globally. You'll need to make sure you have EAS logged in. I'll do that right here. And you can follow these instructions to log in. I've already logged in. And by the way, the way you have your EAS account is to go to expo.dev. Just create an account there. Whatever account you created here, this is what you would log into. The next step is to say EAS in it. This is really important to do because when you say EAS in it and follow the instructions, it will give you what's called a project ID that you'll be able to find in your app.json file. So after you say EAS in it and follow the instructions down here, it will give you an EAS project ID. You need that ID for push notifications to work. The Expo notifications module will not work without an, a project ID. So you'll need to do that. And then you can go ahead and say NPX Expo Start. And then down here is where you send the push notification. And that's what you saw on uh, my phone. And from then on, whenever you open up your app, you can go to the send page and send your push notifications here. You can see how many push notification subscribers you have. You can see a receipt of the push notifications that were sent, how many devices received the push notifications. And if you want to schedule a push notification to all of your users to be sent in the future, you can go to this schedule page. This notification inbox page is, uh, these are all the notifications that show up in that inbox that I was telling you about. I made a video about that in the documentation screen. If you go to notification inbox, you can watch that video as well. This shows topic group push notifications. This is what I was talking about, where you can create a group, uh, say you're a, a restaurant app, you want to send push notifications to people who like hamburgers. You could come down here and create a hamburger group, create that topic group, and you can click this show topic group APIs. And these are the APIs you would use to send push notifications to that topic group. This is how you would subscribe a user to that topic group using this post and post body. So for your topic group name, you would say hamburger, which is this name here. And it is case sensitive. So you need to make sure it's 
the right case. And then you can register individuals here. And from that moment forward, you can actually come up here to your send a topic group push notification page. So I can just click this here. I'll create another one just so you can really see. Uh, I'll say chips. And so after you create topic groups, you can come to this page and select the topic group. So say I wanted to send push notifications to the hamburger topic group. I say buy a hamburger today, 10% off. You can send that. And currently right now it says it doesn't exist. This is because I have not registered any users to this topic group yet. But once I do, this would send to all the users who are subscribed to the hamburger topic group. Here you can see all the indie push notifications that you have registered. This is good for testing if you successfully registered uh, indie subscribers. You can go to the setup guide, Indie Push, to see how all that works. So yeah, there's a bunch of different services packed into this. You can go check it out for yourself. I made a bunch of videos about all of this on my channel. You can just check out the channel and see all of the push notification related videos. And this does, last thing I'll mention is it does work with the new Google Android uh, requirements. It, it tells you exactly how to get all that you need to set up Firebase version one message. Uh, so this does work with the latest version of Google, and this walks you through exactly how to get your uh, JSON Google Cloud access token that you need to send push notifications. You'll go to Android to see how to do that. That gets you ready for Android production. What we just did actually gets you set up for iOS production automatically, so there's no extra steps involved to set up iOS push notifications for production. All that's left is... Uh, there's a few extra steps for Android to get this Google Cloud access token, but then your Android push notifications are set up as well. Let us know in the comments below what you thought about this service, or if you have any questions, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon if you'd like to see more content like this. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.